so if we actually do any imaging, what imaging do we need to do for these vascular tumours? Well, if it's in the parotid, then most of the time if we would actually first go to ultrasound. And because these are hypervascular tumours, we would expect to see signs of hypervascularity. Now, the hypervascularity in an infantile hemangioma is present during the proliferative phase. What we see on imaging of any of the infantile hemangiomas, whether we use ultrasound or MRI, and I must say we usually only use ultrasound or MRI, we do not use CT at all, it is not tissue specific, um, and it involves ionizing radiation. But what we see on imaging in the, in the infantile hemangiomas reflects the phase of the life cycle. So whether we use ultrasound or MRI, depend what we see depends on which phase of the life cycle hemangioma is in. So during the proliferative phase, we'd expect to see hypervascularity, as you can see on this Doppler. The, this is the scan on this baby here, and you can the parotid gland actually is enlarged, it's hypervascular, and if you look at the angioarchitecture of a proliferative hemangioma, you can see these vessels, to the uh, arterial supply coming in through the base here, and actually extending somewhat in an equatorial fashion, and then you can get central drainage back out and peripheral drainage back out from these lesions. The hypervascularity shuts down and closes down as the, as the lesion goes through involution uh, and uh, certainly when it's involuted you do not see this at all. This is an angiogram on this child and this is done during the proliferative phase and you can see how hypervascular it is with rapid flow from this facial artery staining because there's a vascular tumour and that's why you'll get the staining and then rapid drainage uh, through, uh, through uh, venous channels. So this reflects the fact that, in fact, this tumour is in its proliferative phase. It would look different if it was involuting. So these are some uh, hemangiomas, and I'd like to on, on MR. And here is a proliferative hemangioma, involuting and involuted, when there's some skin redundancy and fibro fatty change. So if you do ultrasound and MRI at this stage, you'll see some soft tissue thickening, you'll see evidence of hyperreflectivity due to some fat in it, um, but you won't see hypervascularity. Sometimes you actually see shunts as well, and you won't see shunts in this at all. So on do not need MR angiography or MR venography to make the diagnoses of any of these conditions at all. You just need some basic MR sequences like T1 weighted, T2, perhaps a T2 fat sat, and always a T1 following contrast, following gadolinium in this case. And this is again another parotid hemangioma, and these are very typical findings during the proliferation of an infantile hemangioma. Iso or hypo-intense on T1, hyper-intense on T2. If you saturate the fat, I know it isn't completely saturated here, but this is the uh, hemangioma here within the parotid gland. And compared to the T1, when you give contrast, it avidly lights up with contrast, it avidly enhances. And you'll also, on the gradient echo sequences, see some flow voids because of the hypervascularity. If you image, the same, if you image a child when the lesion is involuting and nearly involuted, you will actually see less contrast enhancement. There is a little, but there is significantly less on this T1 following contrast. And you'll also, in the fat sac uh, image uh, compared to the non-fat saturated, you'll actually see that there is some fat here which actually uh, suppresses more so on a fat saturation sequence. You don't always need to do MRI following these patients up during their life cycles. One of our plastic surgeons occasionally likes to do MRI just to assess the hypervascularity uh, before surgical excision. Occasionally, not always. So what about reaches? These are one type of a congenital hemangiomas. So the reaches and the niches don't have a three-phase life cycle. These reaches, as I said, sp usually spontaneously involute at about 12 months of life after birth. So this is a very this is a uh, baby I showed you before with this large cephalic uh, tumour. On T1, it's generally um, iso-intense. T2, it's hyper-intense. There are flow voids. In fact, there are some small foci of hemorrhage on the T1. And on T1 with contrast, it avidly enhances. And the reason that we would do MRI if we have a baby with what we think is a reach, and often these are diagnosed on antenatal in utero as large hypervascular masses on, on ultrasound scan and on antenatal MRI. If you have a cephalic one, we'd actually do MR because you can get intracranial extension of reaches. 
The ultrasound of a reach is different to that in an infantile hemangioma. There are large lates present, large vascular channels, hypervascular on ultrasound, and if you do an angiogram on this uh, 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 cerebral angiogram of this infant here, you can see that there's rapid flow through the um, tumor here in, on, on into the venous side. It can be quite striking. Even though you have this, these would expect to involute at about 12 months of life. Here is another reach. And some reaches can be confused with arterial venous malformations, but they mustn't be because these are actually vascular tumors. They are not vascular malformations. And it, for the unwary, it can be confusing because what we can see sometimes is rapid shunting uh, from the arterial side on into the venous side, sometimes with aneurysms as well. And this baby actually had significant bleeding on a chest wall reach and we decided to um, do uh, an, uh, an angiogram because we were going to embolize because despite lots of topical treatment with tranexamic acid, this failed to resolve. And this is the ultrasound scan here of this patient. Large vascular spaces and lakes, lots of flow on Doppler, much arterialization of the lesion, large draining veins, high flow in them. And I'm going to show you the angiogram. And you can see this uh, uh, cath arterial catheter has been put in the groin, put into the subclavian artery. The subclavian artery is enlarged. The whole lesion is hypervascular. There's rapid flow back on into an enlarged subclavian vein, back down the SVC into the RA. And, and it's quite interesting when you see this because you immediately think, oh, this is going to be a malformation. It's not. It's a vascular tumor. And we can treat this, and we did. And I actually will show you in one of the other lectures how we managed to treat this. So finally about vascular tumors is the caposiform hemangioendothelioma. This is the vascular tumor that's associated with the Kasselbach merritt phenomenon, where you get platelet trapping leading to thrombocytopenia <coughs> and a coagulopathy. <coughs> we now know that you don't get, um, uh, Kasse, you don't get the Kasselbach merritt phenomenon in the other types of vascular tumors. It's actually in KHE. And in KHE, often if there's a visible lesion, it's very typical of this highly violaceous, this highly purple distillation in, in, on the skin. If we do MRI, often there are a few telltale signs, and the most reliable sign is actually looking at this subcutaneous stranding you can see on this axial MRI. Here's the plaque of tumor we can see here. If I just orientate you on this axial image, this is anterior, this is posterior, so the baby's back here. Here's actually the spinal canal. And see, there are little subcutaneous strands uh, which actually represent subdermal lymphatics, engorgement of subdermal lymphatics. If you biopsy this, and some authorities actually now recommend biopsying all patients who possibly have KHE, you'll actually, and if you actually stain the tissue looking for lymphatic abnormalities and you use a D240 stain, you'll see these lymphatic uh, stains uh, being positive in KHE, and it's very classic, actually. So KHE is the vascular tumor that leads to profound thrombocytopenia. Platelets can be extremely low, so babies are at risk of, it, of significant life-threatening bleeding, such as intracranial bleeding. Years ago, um, if and these babies would be treated with steroids and various other agents, and years ago, if the platelet count didn't improve, we were asked to do embolizations. There are not shunts in these KHE. The lesions are hypervascular. Here is part of an angiographic study on this baby showing how hypervascular this tumor is, but there are no shunts. We used to do embolizations on these uh, using PVA to try and improve the platelet count. But since the introduction of vincristine, it's doing me out of a job. Achieving. Christine is an excellent drug uh, in low dose given weekly to try and improve the uh, condition when it is associated with prof profound uh, thrombocytopenia.